Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, look, we um, appreciate the guys who have subscribed. Uh, if you if you enjoy solar stuff and DIY stuff, uh, really appreciate people hitting the subscribe button. Uh, it helps us out. We're we're going to try and grow the channel. Um, if we can sort of if we can get enough interest, it sort of validates us doing more work, um, spending a little bit of money, you know, trying to trying to get some more content up. So, if you like solar stuff and you like what we're doing, comment down below, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Cheers. Hey guys. Hopefully I haven't got my finger over the microphone like I normally do. Um, so I'm just checking in because uh, I just had a really interesting conversation with someone who said that, you know, these Chinese batteries are really, really unreliable. And I beg to differ. Like, I mean, I realise that there's a, you know, there's a sentiment about Chinese stuff that it's just cheap knockoff. Um, but also, they got some fairly excellent, uh, you know, QAQC processes that they follow. So at first, when you get them, they're not very good. Um, but then over time they perfect their their process and they're very good at re repetitive, you know, sort of manufacturing. So um, those ones down there are the they're the cells that we pulled out of the Voltax battery. It's attached to a little development board there. We were making an integration for the Victron gear, but that's now defunct. Um, but they're not the ones we're here to talk about. They were factory seconds that were turned into a, into batteries by you know a company that upcycled them. The ones we're talking about are these ones. So for me, they've been this BMS has been up for two years, 16 days, and 23 hours. Um, this is the worst pack because this is the top pack. So that one there, just purely by resistance alone, um, into that uh, length thing. I should put the screws back in there, shouldn't I? Um, this is the one that actually cops all the load, right? This is the one that gets beaten up. Um, this one, not so much. The one at the third shelf is the one that gets beaten up the least. The least. So yeah, the battery's full, um, and we're, we're we're just tapering off, right? So the only only charge that's going into it at the moment is the balance charge, and we've got a cell difference of 0.093 volts. And this is the worst it's going to get, right? So we're at 0.584 on the most full battery, and 0.5 on the on the least, right? It's just jumped into 0.5. That's good. That's that's not bad. You, you're going to see the most cell indifference at the very top of charging and the very bottom. So the cell that uh, has the highest internal resistance is probably the one that's going to lag behind and need the most current. It's not obviously going to get any more current than any other battery, so you expect that one to lag behind, which is which is what we're seeing, right? There's always one, here we go, this one's even better. So this is Serp Shelf 2. It's been on for two years, 16 days, oh sorry, two years, one day, 16 hours, right? And it's got a cell voltage difference of, what's that say? 0 0.018 at the moment, right? Lowest cell is 3.57 at the moment, and highest cell is 3.587. So that's that's excellent. Um, I think if you don't beat the shit out of these batteries, they're actually really good. We don't ever get anywhere near the near the fucking sides of this. Um, so this one is the third shelf, the best shelf uh, as far as cell difference. It's currently at 0 0.006 volt cell difference. Right, that's nothing. I mean that one gets hammered the shit out of, it's the one that cops all the load because it's got, even though we sort of tried the best we could to use the same gauge cable, we stuck a little bit of extra in so that we could loop it down, the cable runs are not exactly the same size, right? And that's that's the problem. This one, this one always has the highest voltage as far as that bus bar is concerned, and that one at the bottom always has the lowest voltage because there is some tiny voltage drop. So th all the current's gonna come out of this one, uh, you know, until that pack has dropped down enough that the other two have power taken out of them. That one down the bottom there is attached over here. So it's actually on the other side of the shunt. So yeah, that one's unmetered as far as our storage is concerned. So look, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Like this is, there's 32 cells per shelf. So it's 2P16S, we've talked about this before. Um, but yeah, like 302 amp hours. So you've got 604 amp hours per cell. We don't ever get anywhere near 600 amps being pulled from the whole pack. Like the most we ever see is 350. So we're not even at, even for one, we'd just be over, you know, like 0.6 C maybe. But for three, it's like 0 0.2 something C, which is, which is nothing. And the, these things are, I mean, what, what was the cycle count? Third shelf being the last one that got turned on has 241 cycles. First shelf, so we that one. 250, 260, 248 full cycles. So bear in mind that they've been up for a little bit longer than what the BMS says, because I've reset the BMS a couple of times. So they've probably been in place for three years. Uh, you, 
stupidly reduced our power consumption. Like our bill from Synergy, we're in Western Australia, we, we get billed from Synergy. Um, as we move circuits off the house uh, onto this, like those, those circuits have disappeared from our bill. Our house um, has a 5.5 kilowatt system that sends back power to the grid, um, so we don't get bills, we just generally don't get bills. Um, everything else in the house, all the other circuits that have been moved off the grid and moved onto the standalone system, um, we don't pay for that power anymore. These things, this, this rack was 21 grand Australian. When I say the rack, I mean the cells in the rack. We had to build the rack. So I'd say 22, 23,000 total. I've done a video of it in the past. I'll, I'll pop it up. But um, yeah, this is this has saved us a fortune, man. And it, oh, cheap Chinese, it'll catch fire. No, these are lithium iron phosphate. They're not lithium iron. Um, I have got a lithium iron battery I've got to work on. And to be honest with you, it's scaring the shit out of me. But um, yeah, look, these, these things are, are relatively safe. So, uh, you know, for the guys who, are, who don't know, um, who are saying, oh, you're going to burn your house down with these things. You will not burn your house down with these things. Like, if you do it yourself DIY, there's definitely some risks there. But, you know, like, the batteries, as long as you take care of them, you don't beat the crap out of them, they're fine. Now, I wouldn't leave the rack open like I've done. I really need to put a door on my shed. Like, there's dust blowing in and whatnot. I've got to periodically come through here and remove debris. Um, you know, and all that stuff, that is a risk. I should be concerned about that. But the batteries themselves are not... The, the battery chemistry is fairly safe so anyway look i'll leave it at that i sort of just wanted to respond um just to, for the sake of it people are saying oh you'll get six months out of them when they die you don't get six months out of them just take care of your batteries observe the discharge limit don't don't try and overcharge them don't try and discharge them too much like so many people go oh you can discharge them down to zero oh, i wouldn't do that like yeah they're better than you know flooded lead acid batteries uh, but yeah, discharging them all the way down to zero is going to cycle them more regularly and you will deteriorate them faster. At the rate that we're going, these things should last forever. Um, now, purely from industrial manufacturing, you know, uh, errors in the, in the manufacturing chain, they're not going to last forever. We all know that. There's little imperfections in them that are slowly but surely cascading out of control. Um, and eventually I'll have to replace cells. Bear in mind we've already replaced one of those ones at the back there. Um, yeah, so look, I, look, I think they're right. It's um, you know we're, we're two years in, closer to three years in really, um, and and they're still going strong. We we charge them with as much current as we possibly can. So these cables are good for 290 amps. Um, we can sometimes get little bursts of 320 amps, uh, and these things just don't bat an eye at all, man. Um, the the problem that we're facing now is the bills have gone away. Our stress about Paying, paying more on the power bills has dropped down. Kids are starting to develop bad habits um, during summer. We're looking for places to use the power. Uh, so people start using appliances at night, all that stuff. If you were genuinely off grid and you didn't have the grid to fall back to, you'd really want to keep that under control. Fortunately for us, we've just got a changeover switch. We can switch back anytime we like. But anyway, uh, yeah, that should cover it, I think.